Whether you're into playing your favorite Vita games on the go, or if you prefer to play them on your big screen TV, I'm going to show you how to maximize the speed of your Vita hardware through overclocking. In this video, you'll get all the steps it takes to install PSV Shell on your modded Vita or PlayStation TV. You can get up to a 50% increase in CPU speed alone, boosting up those precious frames per second. And we're starting now. Without a doubt, the easiest way to install PSV Shell is through Auto Plugin 2. If you have it on your system, go into Auto Plugin 2 and launch it. Once inside Auto Plugin, choose Vita Plugins, and then choose Install Plugins from the menu. In the list of plugins, scroll down on the screen until you see PSV Shell by Electri version 1.2. Press the X button to install the plugin to your device. From here, you can go back to the main menu of Auto Plugin 2 and scroll down to Exit. Select Exit with the X button as a reboot is necessary for the plugin to take effect. If you don't have Auto Plugin installed on your system, don't worry, you can still grab PSV Shell directly off of the GitHub from the link in the description below. Scroll down to the Assets section and then download the SKPRX file shown here. Then on your Vita or PlayStation TV, select Vita Shell, then tap or press X to open it. From here, connect your device to your PC using either USB or FTP. In this case, I've connected a Vita over USB. Grab the SKPRX file that you downloaded and copy it. Then go over to the Vita, which will be represented by a USB drive, either by your Vita's memory card or internal storage, and then paste the SKPRX right on the root. In Vita Shell, navigate to the UX0 partition. You'll see the XKPRX file all the way at the bottom. Select it with the triangle button and pick copy with the X button. Now circle back to the list of partitions until you get to UR0 and select UR0 with X. Scroll down to the TIE folder and select it with X. Inside the TIE folder, press the triangle button, then scroll down on the D-pad to paste and select it with X. Circle back to the main menu, then press the PlayStation button and swipe from the right corner down or hold circle to go back to the live area. Then restart your Vita or PSTV for the plugin to take effect. In this example, I've already cleared a space on the live area to make the PSV shell interface easy to read. Press the select button and press up on the D-pad and voila, you've opened the interface. Let's take a look at the details and what to do to set this up properly. First, you'll need to understand the four labels on the left side. The first one, of course, is Central Processing Unit, CPU. It's the main chip that powers the PlayStation Vita or PlayStation TV. ES4 actually represents your GPU or Graphics Processing Unit. It's the one that's tasked with handling video processing. Bus represents System Bus, which is the part of the system that connects the various components of your Vita together in order to allow them to communicate. And XBR represents the cross-menu bar in the PSP emulation components of the Vita. We're getting ready to crank the speed up on this thing. I just want you to be aware that the best way to use this tool is to only use the minimum increase in speed that you need for the application that you're trying to improve. Overclocking does come with risk and it could include increased heat load on your system and reduced battery life if you're using a PlayStation Vita. All that having been said, let's turn the speed up and see what kind of performance improvements we might be able to get. Press X on the one that you want to change and then press to the right to dial up the speed. Don't press X here or it will reset to the factory default. Lock that setting in by pressing down on the D-pad, then A, and then right to make changes. Then press down again to select the next setting. Your system bus is already at 222 MHz, so if you try to change that by going down, well, you're going to get erratic performance. Just leave it at the 222 MHz that it's set to by default. XBR, the cross media bar setting for PlayStation Portable, can be accelerated, but it will only accelerate the menu and not the games themselves because they use a different section of the Vita hardware for PSP emulation. You can save the profile individually for the menu or game that you're in at the time, or press and hold the left shift button, and you can save it as a default for everything globally throughout the system, including every game that you launch. It's great to know that once you save a profile, it will survive a restart of your system, as you can see right here. I'm gonna press select and the up button, and you'll see that all those settings are still there. Let's look at a real world example of overclocking helping with frame per second problems specifically with the game Sonic CD, a homebrew port for the Vita. This also gives me the chance to show you that you can press up again on the D-pad while holding select and you can go into a frame per second only mode or you can go into what's called the HUD, which gives you your CPU usage and your frame per second counter. Currently, this Vita is not overclocked and as you can see, it's getting a solid 59 frames per second at the title screen for Sonic CD. 
and even though the game level screens themselves, it's locked in at a pretty solid 59 frames per second, not overclocked throughout the process. But when it gets to the bonus stages, it's a different story. As you can see here, the frames per second in the bonus stages take a pretty drastic drop from the almost dialed in 59 frames per second to as low down as around 27 or 28 frames per second. This has a significant impact on the speed of how these levels play. And in my testing, I found that the other bonus stages in this game ran at similar frame rates. And for comparison's sake, here it is running at 60 frames per second on a different device at its full speed. Will overclocking the Vita help solve this problem? Let's find out. Now with the Vita set to its maximum overclock settings, I found that I got a pretty consistent 36 to 37 frames per second in the bonus stages across the board. That came up to about a 37% overall frames per second increase across the board. That ain't bad. It's important to note that some PlayStation Vita games are already optimized for 60 frame per second gameplay, so if you overclock the system in those instances, you won't get a benefit from that. Also, some PlayStation Vita games are locked at 30 frames per second, so overclocking is not going to give you 60 frames per second in those circumstances. To help you along your overclocking journey, I've included a very helpful post from Reddit. This post, which is linked in the description below, has a good list of games that are confirmed to run at 60 frames per second non-overclocked, games that run at close to 60 frames per second that might actually benefit from overclocking, and a list of games that are locked at 30 frames per second. It also has a section for unconfirmed games so that you can do testing, become a Redditor, and make contributions of your own. Now that you have overclocking down pat, why not put it to some great use? Check out this video here, shown on screen and desktop and linked in the pinned comment in the description below.